G'day. I've had trouble getting my lathe to reach its maximum speed of 3000 RPM. In fact, I've readjusted it twice, but this time I've done it again, made a video of it. This is my lathe and the PC, which has the software and the electronics to run the lathe. That's a shot of the manual screen and you can see there that it's not reaching its 3000 RPM that it should be. It's only getting 2495. So we spread things around a bit so that we could get at the computer because we wanted to adjust the pots on the card and we ended up with a mess everywhere. This is the circuit diagram for the PC interface card, the card that actually plugs into the computer. And it uses an ISA slot. Yes, an ISA slot. And you no, know they're not made anymore. You buy a new computer and you won't get an ISA slot. So we end up chasing around looking for older computers. You know, sometimes you can get a P3 that's got an ISA slot, but after that, they don't appear. This is the card that is actually in the lathe. Um, that's the one that takes all the signals from the interface card in the computer and feeds everything to the various bits of the lathe. Try and make sense of the circuit diagrams, which were a bit small. We got the cards out so comparisons could be made and we eventually found what we were looking for. Then we had to find them on the card and we spent some time messing around, changing the pots and although the pots made a difference to the voltage that we were getting, they didn't make any uh, difference to the maximum voltage that we got. And we got 9 volts instead of the 10 we should have been getting. We swapped out what I believe is called an op amp, but it made no difference. This is the original Hercus card in the back of the lathe. My new card was too large to go in there, so it had to go in an enclosure hanging on the lathe pretty much beside where the other one was fitted. The driver card is fitted to the lid so the heat sink can be exposed to the outside air. There's the card with the lid opened up a bit. Here we're checking that the 9 volts from the computer is still 9 volts when it gets to the card and it was. There's a shot of the speed. The spindle speed has gone up a bit while it's been running. As the head warms up, it goes a bit quicker. There we were just adjusting the spindle speed. Took it up to 3433. And uh, that works fine. I'll only run it at 3000 RPM though. Here we're testing it in manual. You get two buttons, a plus and a minus, and the minus brings the speed back down again. And in fact, if it's stopped, the minus is how you get your reverse. You can't actually set a speed in manual. Manual on this lathe is only actually meant for use as a setup. You can't use it to do anything sensible. And there you can see it's running in reverse. And that was fine. 3000 was easily achievable. I don't use reverse anyway on this particular lathe. So we established that it works in manual. All those holes in the chuck. 6-2-B-A for an air chuck. 4-6-by-1 for a 4-jaw chuck. And 3-6-by-1 for a 3-jaw chuck. Which makes it look almost like a ventilated disc brake. So I thought we'd better check this works in a program. And it does. The spindle tends to over rev a bit and then cut back to the speed that's set in the program. And in fact, you can see it there on the screen, reach 3000 RPM. If it doesn't reach the speed, the program won't continue. It just errors out and stops. I've discovered a channel on YouTube called Landlife M, which is worth a look. He does everything from sowing crops to flying a drone to 3D printing. But it's his 3D printing that I found fascinating. So I'll leave a 
linked below to his 3D printing playlist. Thank you for watching.